Our first presentation uh, this morning is actually... Good morning, all. Uh, <laughs> ...is actually from Frank, PD0AP. Um, Frank works at ESA, I think at, at STEC, and has been instrumental in um, getting them to, getting ESA to support the idea of at least doing some research into a geostationary spacecraft, another geostationary spacecraft uh, for amateur use. Um, but I won't steal his thunder by de actually describing what the project is about. Um, but obviously, to have a new spacecraft in geostationary orbit would be a wonderful thing. And uh, without further ado, uh, over to PA0 Alpha Papa, sorry, PD0 Alpha Papa, who is online or on YouTube. Good morning, all. My name is Frank Zeppenfeld. I'm working in the Satellite Communications Group of ESA, the European Space Agency, in ASTEC, in the Netherlands, in the Technical Center. We would like to give a short presentation on a future project of ESA, and that project will be under the ACTIS program, the telecommunications program. And in that project, we would like to support the definition of a future amateur satellite geostationary payload as a possible follow-up uh, to Q0100. We apologize that we cannot be there uh, physically. There is some colliding event in the Netherlands. But we would like to thank AMSAT UK, the colloquium organizers, for this opportunity to present this future ESA project. Many of you are probably aware of the innovations that the amateur community has brought. In, in many domains, the amateur community and specifically also the satellite amateur community has been at the foreground of some of the innovations. Examples we list here below, uh, there have been the first experiments that led actually to the COSPAR SARSAT search and rescue system. The first intersatellite links have been performed by amateur satellites. GPS has been demonstrated and validated for the first time in high elliptical orbit. Now, there are numerous examples also in the ground segment where people have put together an enormous ground segment network, which is actually a bit like a precursor for the, the ground station as a service offers that we are now seeing commercially offered. In particular, we think that Q100 uh, being a geostationary payload has then led to additional innovations. More people have been experimenting with DVBS2. People have been experimenting with the higher frequency bands. IoT protocols have been tested, experimented with over geo and ranging experiments have been done. And from the ESA telecommunications perspective, we would like to support the definition of a future geostationary amateur payload such that we see more innovations in the area of satellite communications. Let me give you some background to this project. We've triggered a letter from IARU, and that letter went to our director of the telecommunication program in ESA, and that letter basically requested ESA to support the definition of a future amateur satellite geostationary payload. This as a possible follow-up to Q100. We found this a very good idea, we as ESA, and therefore we went to our member states. You see here all the flags. Those are all the countries that are participate to the telecommunications program of ESA, the ARTES program. And the member states responded and say, we are fine with that. Uh, we would like to see, however, a little bit of attention or say specifically to take into account the wishes of the European and Canadian satellite radio amateurs. In the end, it's European and Canadian taxpayer, taxpayers' money. For us, 
that was a, a good outcome. And now we are here. All this uh, approval happened something like two months ago. And now we are reaching out to the amateur community. We were last month at the AMSAT Germany event. And now we are here at your colloquium presenting this. And later we will engage with a bit more detailed plan to AMSAT UK. The project can now start. We have budgets. We have at the moment 250,000 euro available. And you see here below a few extracts of our internal uh, description. Uh, the coverage of the payload, it should serve in particular European and Canadian radio amateurs. And we propose that we implement this activity. So the 250,000 euro that we spent that by using a combination of internal efforts, so ESA internal, industrial, and you, the amateur community. And we describe here further the scope of this activity. We would like to consolidate with the wishes the new requirements for a future Q0100 type of payload from the amateur community or may, and maybe even by collecting those requirements by the amateur community, but also to take, take into account maybe wishes from the commercial satellite industry. Maybe there are certain things they are interested and they would maybe never fly themselves. We would like to trade off in this activity a number of payload options and payload designs and we should not forget also the user segment it's not too much use to have a, an extremely fancy satellite payload but nobody can pay actually the, the ground stations we also would like to look at scenarios on then how to get further how to finance how to operate and procure such an amateur payload and then one of the most important things is, of course, we would like to investigate any hosting opportunities on geostationary platforms, or maybe there is an option for a very, very small geo. You will, I think, have other presentations on that topic uh, later this day. Here you see a chart that depicts a possible study logic for this activity. But as mentioned, we started recently. All input is very welcome. We are just shaping this uh, initiative. We think first we should gather input from the amateur community. We should look what the lessons learned are from Q0100. And we would also need to identify the requirements of the amateur and the interest of the amateur community. There might also be input on areas or activities that maybe ESA should not do. Uh, we would actually be quite interested uh, in that. We depicted here in these blocks uh, who we think should be in, in the lead. And we think this is typically where the amateur community should take the lead by identifying requirements and, and interest. Then we hope together, let's say ESA amateurs and likely also industry, that we come to a number of payload options. And those payload options will, be, will need to be traded off against quite a number of things. Uh, important is, of course, the frequency bands. Are we going up to 24 or 77 gigahertz even? This might attract, of course, uh, yeah, another community, uh, another part of the amateur community. We, do we stay analog or do we go digital even high up uh, so that basically we have a flying Linux box in Geo in which we upload our Docker containers? Um, that, again, this might be of, a, of interest to a specific uh, community. We also have to address what kind of applications we would like to, to run. Is it more the, the messaging or the voice? Or do we want to do some IoT things, M17 voice, or are we going even up to 5G type of communications? 
over satellite. We should also consider uh, the use of intersatellite links. Actually, some of those frequency allocations are, let's say, the primary uh, amateur satellites, and you could use them even for intersatellite links. So that might that be quite an interesting scenario if maybe in the future you have some uh, LEO amateur satellites which talk, for example, in 77 gigahertz. The geographical coverage is, of course, very important. And we should also consider the degree of centralization uh, when you operate such a payload and also in, in how far uh, yeah, a certain degree of centralization is actually tolerated. If it becomes too centralized, that um, maybe some people would not be too interested anymore to experiment. Then, as mentioned, we, we can have a, a very nice payload, but we sh should still have user terminals that people can make and can pay. So, such a payload should, of course, also have a, a educational attractiveness. It should be interesting for students and also maybe people who are a bit new in the domain to experiment uh, with. And then, of course, the hosting. Yeah, how do we host? Uh, maybe we do a very, very small geo or we host it uh, together with, uh, with a large operator. That is to be, um, to be considered. Then, let's say, if we went through a number of payload uh, options, and we see this a bit as a brainstorming exercise, we would like to come to, uh, back to the, uh, the amateur community with uh, a selection of those payload options, and then there we think that there is, it would be good to design and prototype in more detail uh, a number of options. In the meantime, we would like to start reaching out to the satellite operators. And then in about a year, we would like to have a good design for, say, at least two payload options. And we would like to do that again together with the amateur community. So what will be now our next immediate steps in this project? We have the budget secured. There are a few things we still need to consider, and we are doing that internally. That is how to engage with the satellite amateur community. It's maybe a bit difficult to sign a, a contract with people in the amateur community to do some work. So we need to find some modus operandi there. In addition, we need to think a bit how we could support also in kind, maybe with equipment, maybe with, with travel to bring people together. Um, all that we hope to have made our mind up uh, next month on that. Then the overall planning. Ideally, we would like to have a few detailed payload options ready, let's say documented, at uh, an event in September, September next year. So September 2024 at the World Satellite Business Week, where all the main satellite operators and also the primes meet. It will be a convenient place to start uh, discussions. And it would also be a way to uh, provide a bit of a visibility to this initiative and to the satellite radio uh, community in general. Then in the near future, uh, as mentioned, we will also do some internal work on this. We will put on the table maybe four or five payload uh, options just to start the discussions. And then we will be reaching out to the main European amateur satellite communities uh, next month to start the discussion how we could maybe organize work and what would be the best way to do that. As mentioned also previously, this is an initiative that is being shaped, so we are extremely interested in any suggestions, criticism, whatever, um, very, very welcome. This ends the presentation on this initiative. Uh, we would like to thank again uh, AMSAT UK for the opportunity 
and we wish you a, a very interesting uh, colloquium in the coming days. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Frank. That's got the juices flowing early in our meeting. Um, I'm not sure if you're watching uh, this, Frank, but uh, thank you very much indeed for involving us or offering to involve us in the development or the research and planning for this. Um, any bright ideas from the floor as to what we should do? Oh, all right. <laughs> I was hoping for a more positive response. Martin at the back. Uh, okay, Mar Martin is asking why we're not going to be considering flying FPGAs, but uh, yeah, that's one. Uh, how about 77 gigs for the microwave bods in the room? Sounds a good idea. Downlink on 10. This is no. Okay, we've obviously got a lot of lot of, lot of interesting work to take on. Uh, Mike, MJW. I, I can repeat your comment if you, or I can walk over here with the microphone. Quite. Firstly, I mean, so QO one hundred transponder is about a hundred watts, um, and um, will we be able to replicate that with the amateur? payload certainly not at 77 gigs so uh, yeah 10 gigs down the other question is how to put power up at 24 gigs and 77 gigs and both of those bands are very close to um, primary radio astronomy bands so we'd have to be incredibly careful not to radiate into those so I could see a lot of issues with using those microwave millimeter wave bands so maybe the solution is to use some lower bands like 5.7 to go up but I guess there's no amateur allocation. So maybe we're stuck with 2.4, I don't know. But uh, generating power in those bands is going to be difficult. I think that's the main thing. Thank you. Yeah, we have an up and down link on 5.6, 5.8. Yeah. OK. Uh, we're running at quite ahead of schedule at the moment. Uh, OK, hopefully... Uh, uh, we'll have some input from microwave and TV people as well. Yeah, not, n not, n Noel is suggesting that we have a AMSAT UK working group develop team to do this. So, okay, thank you thank you for that advice. Uh, we're running quite ahead of schedule. Would you like a longer coffee break to start, or would you like uh, would you like uh, Kieran to start at half past ten rather than ten forty five? Um.